Let's go explore Ghana. Look how beautiful he is. And he's huge. Hola, I am heading to Ghana this time and this is my first time in Western Africa and I've heard a lot of great things especially about people I have a really good Ghanaian friend she's given me a lot of tips so I'm really excited let's go Don't forget that yellow viewer certificate because you will need it to enter Ghana Hello from Accra, from Kotoka International Airport. It only took two hours to process the arrival. Flight number two. The next morning, I got on the plane and headed to Tamale. The plane was quite old, and I was a little scared, but we landed safely and then headed towards Mole National Park. I am in Mole National Park. It took about three hours drive from Tamale Airport, but I'm here and I'm staying at the Mole Motel. If you want to get like a more fancy place, you also have Zaina Lodge, which is more like a luxury thing. And I'm heading to do my safari now. I will see you guys on the other side. I really hope to see some elephants. Really, really, really hopeful because I love elephants. Let's go. Alright, so we've ditched the jeep and we are going on foot now. Hopefully see some animals. It's a bit dangerous but oh well, anything for animals. So we tried a lot but no elephants sadly. They walked too fast and went too quickly. Ended up not seeing any elephants, but it was a beautiful sunset. I was really hopeful for the next day. Good morning. I am in Mole National Park. It's day two. It's about 6.30 a.m. And I'm waiting for my guide to start our safari and hopefully see some elephants today. Uh, but the park itself, it's actually the largest national park in Ghana with the most diverse wildlife. If you're lucky, you might even see a leopard here. I'm really hopeful to see some elephants. They're my favorite animals on the entire planet. It's actually quite cheap to do a safari here. To get here, it's Tamale Airport. And then you basically take uh, about two and a half, three hours drive, and then you are here. There are a couple more things we'll do, but that after the safari. Let's go. Hello. 
Mole National Park does not only have a lot of diverse animals, it's also an excellent spot for birding. The ranger got some exciting news and we headed straight for it. Guess who just we found? Hello. Look how beautiful he is. And he's huge. He was a little shy, so he ran away, but we got some more excited news and ran back to the motel. Look what we found, having fun in the dam, the two of them. This is the closest I've ever been to an elephant. Oh my god, that was epic! Guys, this is Alyssa and this is John. And when John says you will see elephants, you do see some. <laughs> I had an amazing time with these guys, but we move on to the next stop now. So it is time to start heading out uh, of Mole National Park. And this time we are going to see the oldest mosque in Ghana, an interesting stone and a village where they make something interesting. So I am at the Larabanga Mosque in the Larabanga village and this is the oldest mosque in Ghana, the entire country. And it comes from 1421 and it's made in this Sudanese style which means it's made of clay and every six months they have to kind of apply more clay for it to keep standing and be in good shape. So um, I don't think I can go inside because of a recitation, I'll try my best. If not, we at least get to see it from outside. Let's go on, explore the mosque, and then let's see what else we can do. There's some good stuff around here. Luckily, I can go in. So let's see what the mosque is like. This is the mosque from inside. It is actually quite small, but it's really nice and cool in here. This is where the Imam goes and that's pretty much it despite looking like a massive mosque from outside it's not that big inside all right so i'm with some really lovely ladies here in larabanga and they are showing me something they make here which you might have heard of but you might not associate with ghana it's a shea butter it's actually the most amazing shea butter that you can get from Ghana and the purest form from Larabanga. So it starts as some beans that you can see here and the ladies go and collect it on foot. Then they process it, process it, process it and this is how it basically ends up. So you can apply it on your skin, it's amazing um, for your skin whether it is a suntan or whether you just want your skin to be hydrated. They also make some soups with it and use it for cooking, so it's like used all over the place. But if you come here, this is another great thing. If you wanna buy some, you're more than welcome. So, let's continue on. I am at the mystic stone of Larabanga now. Now, this has an interesting history. Apparently, every time they tried to move it to build a road, the stone came back to its original position. And it just became this mystic stone afterwards, and they use it as a source of spirituality now. They come and offer their prayers now, not like to the stone, but as a way of kind of, you know, connecting to the God. That it's another sort of miracle. So, if you're passing by, don't forget to stop. I really enjoyed looking at it. So I left from Larabanga and about three hours later I am at Kintampo Waterfall. I thought, you know, instead of doing a boring drive all the way to Kumasi, it's a nice way to break the journey and it's really refreshing. So I'm gonna go see the waterfalls with you guys and then we continue on to Kumasi. We're a lot more away. So 
was a fun break. Let's continue on to Kumasi. Do, 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 do. By the way, it's really hot. The drive from Kentampa Waterfalls to Kumasi took about four hours and I finally got to my hotel. I have just arrived in my hotel in Kumasi and look at that hotel, it's so cute. Good morning from Kumasi and I am with my buddy Prasha. Hello guys. And we are heading to Bombay, an interesting place. It's really loud here, so we'll talk more when we get there. All right, so it took about an hour on the bus. The road basically became really bad. But we are here and we are heading to the center where we can see the Kente cloth being weaved. Apparently the inspiration comes from spiders. It's quite interesting. And um, the king of Ashanti people, he only wears clothes that are from this village and are made with, you know, the Kente cloth basically. in the village of Bonvry, which is famous for its kente cloth and it's quite interesting that these beautiful patterns the inspiration actually comes from spiders and they are set patterns that actually belong to the royalty here so it's it's an honor to see this process it's like magic it's mesmerizing how quickly and how beautifully they make these patterns appear like that you know it's just you can just stand and watch her all day and not get bored it's just so beautiful uh, beautiful so i'm gonna go enjoy i hopefully might try some on might see if i do if not uh, we will meet back in kumasi <laughs> The village has a lot of shops and if you want you can buy some kente cloth from here. I did end up buying a little piece of this royal cloth for myself. It took a couple of hours from the center of Kumasi and away from all the craziness, I am at Lake Bosamtui and this absolute gorgeous place has become my instant favorite. It's so beautiful. I don't know how to describe it from the craziness of Kumasi when you come here. It just sort of, you know, like your heart just opens up. It's so much beautiful nature. And this is what you associate with Africa. So it's amazing. I love it. So there are two um, theories. One is a scientific one, that there was a meteorite that hit the place and the lake was formed. The other one is that a deer, a hunter shot an antelope and where it died, it formed a little groove which became bigger and bigger and bigger with time and turned into Lake Bosamtui. So this is actually also sacred for the local people, for the Ashanti people. I'm, I think it was totally worth coming here, I love it. Lake Bosamtui turned out to be my absolute favorite spot in all of Ghana. Hello, this is Kweku from Mahesha Palace and I came here to see the museum and this is the palace of the king of Asantes. So unfortunately the museum is closed for renovations but I'm really enjoying the garden with some new buddies here. Um, it was also great because there was a guide who explained the history throughout the time, how the British came and took things over as usual and then um, how it went back and how the things run now. So it's a great place to come and explore, understand the history a little bit, um, the culture a little bit as well. And I think it was also really nice to just sit under this beautiful, beautiful tree and experience this beautiful garden. So I'm a bit hungry now and I have my flight to Accra soon as well. So I'm gonna go get some food and then we head towards Accra and if time permits, maybe a little bit of Kumasi more. 
So let's continue with our journey. It is so busy! These are snails! Look how massive they are! Wow! No visit to Kumasi is complete without its market. It's absolutely crazy how busy, bustling, full of colors it is. But I would recommend coming with a local. Um, I think there's a tour company called Black Roots Tours um, who are really nice and who can arrange this for you. And this is the new market. You can also pop into the old one. It's just really lively and really colorful. So definitely recommend spending some time here. Good morning. It's another beautiful day in Kumasi and Prasha and I are going to see the sword of a comfort. Sorry, how do you pronounce it? Comfo Anoche. Comfo Anoche. The story behind the sword goes that there is a priest called Comfo Anoche who uh, brought the sword and he wanted to bring all the people together who were fighting here. And he did that by putting a sword in the ground and he predicted the day someone uproots the sword will be the end of the Ashanti kingdom. So, they've tried a lot, no one's been able to do it. I'm gonna give it a try as well. Not because I hate the Ashanti Kingdom, but because, you know, why not? <laughs> so, let's go see the sword first, and then we continue on to the other things in Kumasi. It was really fun to learn about the Ashanti kings and queen mothers and the history of sword from the guide at the site. Check out the part 2 of my Ghana travel vlog which has some more interesting and exciting places in this beautiful country. Guys, this is Brown Boy Travels. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section. If I have missed something, please let me know. Also, give me some suggestions about your country. I will see you in the next video. Until then, you have an amazing day ahead. Mwah.